Thank you, Natalie. Let's go to page 10 and we can view the application package. Please follow these three directions to prepare the application package. There are no additional steps outside of what is included here. Please note under number one, the fourth bullet point, if an item is pending, submit a placeholder describing next steps, including estimated completion dates. Please review the last bullet under number one. Only send requested items. Do not send letters of support addressed to our department. We understand the work it takes to get these letters. If you are required by your director to get letters of support, please have them addressed to your organization. If addressed to OGAL staff, we are required to respond to each letter, which can slow down the application review process. Now, Cedric will share a few thoughts about letters of support. Thank you. Um, we want to emphasize that letters of support are not necessary. Um, I know that oftentimes they're difficult to get, and usually you'll start the process by asking someone for that. Um, we do not look at, as Adela said, we do not consider this uh, those letters of support, and when we do our review of your project, it will be based on the merits of your project. Um, this is a commitment that we made to uh, all applicants um, over the last two decades that um, that letters of support will not influence the outcome. However, I want to emphasize that as you'll, you'll see later on today, that if you follow the process that we utilize here and you engage community, you will know by your application whether or not there is a support for your project in the community that you're trying to serve. So I'm going to turn it back to Adela and let her continue on. Adela. Great, thank you, Cedric. A link to the online application system, submittable, will be open this summer. At that time, you can begin uploading documents. Also, an email blast will be sent to notify you when the system is ready to accept RPP applications. Remember, our competitive project officers look forward to answering your questions. Now, please join me on page 11 and we will view the application checklist. This checklist is your go to resource to organize your application. This checklist provides the exact page number of each checklist item. The column to the right identifies which checklist items require the authorized representative signature. Please use the chat feature if you have any questions. And now I'll ask uh, if there's any questions in the chat for Victor. I think Victor is getting out again, so let me let me go back up. I'm going to um, see if there's anything that hasn't okay. been answered in the chat yet. OK. I think it's uh, OK, so Carrie's question's been answered. Um, and the links to the cheat sheets have been posted. Are nonprofits that are not connected to a park eligible to apply? Yeah, so um, nonprofits, uh, as long as you are a uh, 501c3 and you meet the definition on page 66, there are some um, bullet points there that you want to make sure that your primary purpose, you know, the, the primary purpose of your nonprofit meets one of those uh, criteria under the nonprofit definition on page 66. So it can be uh, your nonprofit can be recreational, vocational, educational, or other services to improve social cultural conditions. Um, your mission can be for the preservation, protection, or enhancement of land or water resources, um, or the provision of conservation, environmental education, and other services. So, um, Brianna, I hope that answers your question. Let us know if you need more information on that if you're eligible. Um, yes, we posted the competitive chart and is a county RCD an eligible applicant um, and I see Richard has posted the response there. So you just want to make sure that your RCD was formed under one of those um, chapters that are listed under the district definition 
on page 64. And we have another question. Can the nonprofit applicant fund the project but not own the land where the proposed project location? So the answer to that is yes. Uh, nonprofits can do a project on uh, land owned, say, for instance, by the county. Um, we'll go into more details about lease agreements uh, once we get to checklist item number 10. So we'll go into more detail about that. But you can have like a 30 year lease agreement or joint use agreement uh for that property that you would like to develop okay and let me see i think there's one final question here you guys are good i i have that question natalie um okay good so, <laughs> they're coming so, in hot <laughs> yeah so, so the question is um our parks on two non-contiguous parcels would a project that covers major features on both parcels be eligible and the answer is yes, if both parcels are part of the same park, we consider the park as your project site. And let me give you let me give you one example. Let's say you have an existing um, 1000 acre large regional park and it's uh, you have part of the park on one side of the, the river or freeway and then it's contiguous on the other side of the river or freeway. Um, and you're going to do one project in the far eastern part of the regional park and one I'm sorry, one feature on the far eastern park, one feature on the far western park. Um, if if it's all part of one park, then we all consider the entire park as your project site. OK, and, and that's important to remember when we get into criteria number 10 and where you place your fact finder pin. You can place your pin anywhere within the boundary of your park. So we consider the entire park as your project site. Good question. Now, the answer would be no if you're talking about two different parks. Um, only uh, you cannot submit one application for two different parks. OK, so it has to be uh, one application per park. Thank you. All right. Please turn to page 12 and we'll dive into the application form instructions and the application form itself. All right, um, here are the instructions for the application form and I want to draw your attention to the last three bullet points on the page under people to list on the form. You'll see that applicants will need to list the authorized representative application contact and grant contact should the grant be awarded. Um, please note your application contact may be different from your grant contact. It can be the same person. Either way is totally fine. The application form checklist item number one is on page 13 and a fillable form will be available on the website shortly. If you have any questions about the directions on page 12 or the form on page 13, please contact your competitive pro review project officer or use the chat feature if you have any questions and I will turn it over to Cedric.